Hello and welcome everybody today to this special um, live. I hope that you're doing well. I'm just going to pop in quickly into the group to make sure that I'm coming in live where I'm supposed to be coming in. As you know, this month I'm encouraging you to read more. A lot of um, people who join the group say they wish they had more time to read. So um, that's what we've been focusing on um, in January. And I wanted to introduce a very special guest today um, who I believe has a really good way of getting um, encouraging you to read. But I'll, I'll bring her into the, the conversation so that you can meet her. So, um, everybody, this is Alex Merton McCann from the Grown Up, Grown Up Girls Report. Um, hi, Alex. Very nice of you to join us today. Hi, Anne. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, now, Alex is um, a very busy mum. I know she's just got back from vacation. She's got three children, three or four children. I've actually got four. I've got four boys, four. Anne. I'm very lucky. <laughs> very, well, very lucky. I have one of each and I would probably prefer to have four boys than a daughter, so um, I can hear <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah, no, no. I, they look, they're fabulous. They're, they're gifts. They're gifts. We have, you know, highs and lows, good times, bad times, but overall I wouldn't trade it for a thing. Exactly. So as a busy mum, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do uh, work-wise and in your spare time. Yeah, sure. Well, look, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Anne, for this opportunity. It's lovely to be here and amongst like-minded people that uh, I sense from the group feel a bit overwhelmed and a bit out of control and, you know, a bit short of time. Well, that's just how I live my life. So, you know, I feel like I'm amongst kindred spirits here today. So, so lovely to meet you all. So I have, um, I have four kids. Um, they're a little older. So my baby is 17. He started his first day of year 12 today. Um, I've got 17, 19, um, 21, 22 rather, and 24. So we're yeah, enjoying that. 22 part. yourself, Alex. My gosh. I think I need no. you in on another Facebook Live. You look no, fantastic. No. I started very early, Anne. That's a whole other okay. story in okay. itself. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's worked out well. It's worked out well. So so I have four boys. Everyone's at home except I have one little go back to uni um, in Newcastle in a couple of weeks. But uh, I have a very, very busy house um, and um, I've got two cats and we've just got a brand-new puppy yesterday as well. Um, ah, so nice. there's whining and crying in the background. Apologies, everyone, because he's very mean today um but i'm uh, gorgeous and of course he's male everything's male and the cats are male <laughs> the dog's male you know it's just just what we do so uh so that's that's my, and i've got a lovely husband who is very patient and uh you know in uh appreciates that i go on big journeys and you know has a lot of stuff going on so so my um i, I have a couple of things going on so i have a podcast called the grown-up girls report podcast and it's essentially a weekly podcast and we discuss everything from books and beauty and well-being and parenting and health and Christmas and food uh, and it's, it's every week. But during COVID, the books became quite quite a regular feature. In fact, I set up a book club. I had this epiphany one morning when I was lying in bed and couldn't sleep and stressed as hell about the daily COVID count as we were all tuning mm -hmm. into. And I thought, Yes. One of, my, one of my resolutions for 2020 was to read more. And, you know, before I had kids, I was a crazy reader. I used to read regularly. But then, you know, I had four kids and I've always worked. I've always got something going on. And it's just fallen. It's just fallen off my the top of my to-do list. So I thought, right, COVID, mm. the silver lining of COVID was we all had a little bit more time and uh, we needed to fill our, t our days. So I thought, right, we're going to do this book club thing. So for the first 12 weeks, we read a book a day, a book a week, rather not a book a day, a book a week, which was very intense. Um, and then when COVID settled down a bit, and, you know, we lockdown sort of finished, we've, we've gone to one book every two weeks. So that's a little bit uh, saner, still a bit crazy, but, but a little bit, a yeah. little bit saner, um, which is really, really great. So I've got the Grown Up Girls Report and then I also have another job. I work for a company called McAfee and I've got a media ambassador job for them and I'm their Australian cyber mum. So... This is just an extension of my life, Anne, because it's all about, you know, trying to, try to help your kids stay safe online. And, uh, mm. you know, my kids have made lots of mistakes online and they haven't always been good boys and no one's perfect in my house, you know. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm 
shared my experiences and tried to help parents along the way because it's it's a minefield. It, it's a minefield. So, um, oh, no. yeah. So I do that. So I, I write for them regularly and do TV, radio, whatever, whatever I need to do to help people basically. So, uh, so that's really good. And then, um, yeah, and then I manage my family. So I've, 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 you know, I've got that going on. So I'm always out of time. I always have to-do lists, you know, in my little pink book here that are, I never, ever get to the bottom of. Yes. I have yes. a at the start of every day and I, you know, I'm, I'm all fueled up on my all grey and uh, I think, oh, she can get all this done. I get to the end of the day and I'm never there. But uh, I keep on trying and I keep on trying. I think that's just normal. I think that's just the normal for everyone. But it's all about juggling it and really focusing on yourself so you're able to do all the juggling really well because when you're in that really bad stress place, everything just becomes even more stressful. So doing things like reading or crafting or exercise, whatever your thing is, it really encourages you to be more calm and be able to handle things. Well, that's what I've found anyway. So that's why I'm really encouraging people to be living their best life and reading was one of the big ones that came out from the questions when people join. They'd love to find time to read. So if you would give someone five tips on how they would like read a book in a week, my God, that would just be a miracle. Like in two weeks a month, how would you encourage what are five tips that you would give someone to um, find more time to read? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Well, look, for me, I think that having having the deadline of having to read a book a week meant I had to do it. So having some sort of accountability, I think, is, is really helpful. So mm -hmm. you might decide to join a book club. You might find a book buddy. There's a lot of book buddy sort of setups that happen on Instagram, for example. So you could find yourself a book buddy and you could, you know, co-read a book with someone and check in at a certain page that can work really well. Um, our book club is, it's a virtual online book club. So what that means is every three months I, I issue the, the, the list of books we're going to read, the reading list, and then it's up to you what you choose to dip in and dip out of. A lot of people will actually buy all the books. They get onto Booktopia and they buy the three months worth of books and then they read with us. Um, and that is really great too. And I always try and include people's feedback in the podcast and so it's a community and then we have discussions on Facebook and Instagram. So Getting yourself involved in a book club, accountability, is, is a no-brainer. The other thing is I recently did a podcast purely because I looked at my um, looked at my to-do list this year and it's very big. I've got a couple of other projects as well on the on the horizon. I thought, how the hell am I going to get this done? So I did this podcast purely based on my own research, how I'm going to be more productive. And I read this great book over summer um, called The Miracle Morning by a guy called Hal Elrod. I've heard really, that one. Really, really great book and can't recommend mm -hmm. it. Oh, look, I tell you what, if you're going to buy a book today, buy this one. It's super good. Yeah. He has okay. basically six steps, and I won't bore you with them all now. Um, well, actually, I will very quickly. Top top line. Um, he says you basically got to get up early, and there are six things you need to do in the morning. So you need to have some silence. You need to have some positive affirmations. Basically, gene yourself up, talking yourself into what it is you would like to achieve and be. Mm -hmm. Visualisation, basically visualising your success again as well. Exercise. And then reading. He's a big fan oh. of reading. Um, yeah, and then scribing, so journaling. But he believes, um, and he's all about. I mean, he, he speaks a lot to a, a corporate, a corporate person. But these are, lessons are so relevant to anybody. Um, but reading from experts, people who are, you know, the top of their field, and people who've achieved achieved something that you may like to achieve, can be very, very inspiring. So he's a big fan of reading. So I know when oh, I've got a book deadline. Out. Yeah, when I've got a book deadline, like I've actually got one now, to be honest. We're recording um, a podcast tomorrow with the with the latest Trent Dalton book, All Our Shimmering Skies. And I'm going to be honest, it's about 430 pages. I'm up to about oh, page well. 220. Um, oh, and I've got, <laughs> I've got a big day today. And um, and I haven't even, and then when I finish reading it, I have to do my analysis so that I sound like I know what I'm talking about. So yeah. I've got a big day. So as soon as I finish, um, finished chatting to you I will be um, just getting out and doing it because I've got the deadline so mm -hmm. but I find that when I have a deadline I, I get up early and read so I, I, I channel how get my morning routine right. so accountability morning routine um, you know make sure you find a book you like that's also really mm -hmm. important because mm -hmm. sometimes we get the pressure oh, we should be reading we should be reading and someone might recommend a book and we pick it up and we go oh, okay well 
it's okay. I'm not loving it. I don't really, I'd rather watch TV. So my advice is if you start reading, if you don't love it, flick it, find something else, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, and I think sometimes as well there can be this sort of snobbery amongst readers. Like, you know, people say you need to read something very intellectual or it needs to be, you know, life-changing. That's a lot of pressure, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, Go to Target, go to Kmart because the book's so well priced at Target and Kmart in my favourite yeah. shop. Find something that floats your boat, go for it. You don't like it, buy something else or borrow something off a friend. I think I also find too that there's a lot of FOMO around books. Like I can remember when the Fifty Shades books came out and everyone was like, oh, my God, you've got to read them. And like me struggling to find time to read only because I wasn't prioritising it, but it wasn't yeah. my kind of thing. Like, and I think everyone read it because it was like it was really talked about. And there's been a lot of books like that over the years that they become the it thing. But if it's not your thing, don't feel obliged that you have no. to read. Not I at think, all. Not I think being in a book club is really good too when you can find the right book club for you because these books are kind of coming recommended. So you sort of think, well, you know, I'm in this book club of um, like-minded people we all sort of have, we're busy mums. We all sort of like the same kind of things. So this is got, kind of going to be a good read. So that's why I like book clubs myself. I agree. It sort of short circuits that whole, you know, going to the bookshop and where do you start? So, yeah, you know, so, many, kind authors. Of, so mm. many authors, you know, if you haven't been in the loop for a while, I know when I, like, you know, March last year when we started the book club and I tried to get back into it, I felt like I was, I, I walked into this bookshop and I was a bit overwhelmed thinking, where the hell do I start? Mm -hmm. But, you know, now, now I'm, all good, I'm, I'm all good. But So don't be overwhelmed. A book club is, as you say, a really good place to start. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and and actually, to be honest, there's a lot of book clubs on Goodreads. Goodreads is a great place to get book reviews yes. too. So I highly recommend getting involved in um, in book reads. And now the other thing as well, Anne, which, which I've got a lot of girls in the book club who love the audio book. And oh. um, yeah, and Audible is fabulous. It is fabulous. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually, you know, just keep getting all these great offers from Audible at the moment. It's not very expensive to join. And they're always offering you free books. And um, and if we're going to pump up the exercise and channel Hal Elrod's morning routine, mm -hmm. you can't walk and listen. Yeah. And you're doing the book time. Mm -hmm. so, That's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing, the other thing, the other reason why I think you should get into books is it really hit me last year. So so after we started the book club, which was March, um, I try and do dinner every night regularly. Look, not, not everyone's there every night and sometimes, you know, there's a lot to talk about. I still keep on trying. I try and get everyone to sit around yeah. the table. And, um, and, I, and one of the first books we read was The Tattoo List of Auschwitz, which was an amazing, an amazing book. I highly recommend. It's a good place to start. Not that hard, but a little bit of history. And I remember relaying some of the stories to, um, to, to my boys around the table and talking about Auschwitz and, and you know, some of the stories. And, uh, and I felt like as a mum who hadn't probably prioritised my reading, I probably mm. wasn't maybe able to offer as much in terms of conversation as I had when I started the book club because I'm always now sharing tidbits from books and funny stories mm. and anecdotes and details mm. about how authors got to be where they are. And my boys now, you know, one of the conversations a lot from us around the dinner table, well, what's next in the book club, Mum? And um, oh, it, it, good. yeah, I know. And they're very, they're boy, boy. They're not, you know, they're, they're not really girly, girl, which is fine. You can be, be whatever you want to be. But um, so yeah, so it, it, it creates a lot of conversation in the family. Quite often they laugh and don't get it. But you know, it's it's still a great way to open their eyes. So read because it benefits your family too. That's another good reason to do it. That's a, yeah, that's a good one because yeah, it makes oh, you um, it makes you um not more worldly, but more um, knowledgeable about just everyday kind of things, whatever the subject is and that kind of thing. So, yeah, engages conversation, strength, strengthens relationships at the dinner table. Yeah, yeah great idea. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Uh, my, my, like I used to read to the children all the time every night and as my son grew older, like being a girl and a woman, I always liked the fairy tale princess stories. Uh, I read with my daughter, but it was always hard to find something that I could read with my son. And I really loved the Emily Rodder books. I don't know if you've oh, heard of yeah. her. Yes. And I was really enthralled by them. Like I'd say, what chapter are we up to? What happened last? Because they were good for a, a tween boy, but they were also good for parents. So, you know, finding that 
kind of common ground too where you can read with your children and find um, books that are, are good for you as well. Because some absolutely. of them are actually boring. Oh, yes, absolutely. But I think, are you referring to Del Toro's Quest? Del Toro Quest? That was her big one, Emily. Yes, Mara. yes, yes. Multiple, multiple, you know, multiple, multiple books in that. No, my boys loved those and I love reading them too. They, they were very well done. She's a she's Yeah, a very well done. I'd love to see yeah. them in a movie, you know, like some of them were really, really good. I reckon they'd be good, good movies. Totally agree, totally agree. We love the Selby books. I don't know if anyone else likes Selby. Um, the Talking Dog, my boys love those. Oh, and yes, Captain yes. And Captain Underpants because it was all a bit cheeky and lots of boys' fart humour, which they thought was hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pants, you know. So they it was sure really do. good. Yeah, so, absolutely. But I loved, um, sorry, I was just going to say, I've just loved some of the books I've read I've shared with my boys. So there was a great book um, this year we read called A Gentleman in Moscow, which, by, which was by Amor Tales. I think that's right. Yes, sorry, so many books. Um, and that was set during the Russian Revolution and that was inc incredible. So even oh even adults were always reading too, so I'm loving that. Yeah, I love some I love those with a historical um yes. storyline. I Absolutely. love it. So was that all? Was that five? I can't I lost count. There was look, so many. I, look, I think that was four or five. I think that's I think that's five. Look, just just do it because your life's gonna benefit from it. Your kids are gonna benefit oh, from no. it. You know, no. it's a win. And a win. any other things um, that you would encourage? Like, I know if I like if I'm horizontal, it's like one page. So, mm. what? Like you said, listening to um, the audio version of the book, walking. What are some other ways that you can sort of like designate an area, or what, what would you suggest? How do you yeah. find time? Look, I like, like, as I said, I like getting up in the early, early in the morning and reading. So I've usually got my nighty and my dressing gown on a really comfy pair of slippers. Um, yeah. And I make myself two cups, like I have here, of tea. <laughs> which I'm Earl Grey fan. I'm such an Earl Grey fan. Um, and I have a certain chair I sit in and I have a little blanket for my knee that's a bit fresh in the morning. And I make sure I'm really comfortable and I go for it. I go for it. Um, yeah. That's really important. I have a designated spot. Like you, I... Like last night, I tried to read because I've got this deadline with this this mm. um, trench book. I think I read a page last night in bed, so that's a disaster for me too. And I'm yeah. like, you. just a disaster. Um, so uh, yeah, have a comfy chair. Um, and also, I think we need to think a little bit about you know self care. And by reading, we're actually investing in ourselves. And self care is a word that I have always struggled with because to me, it almost feels selfish, indulgent. Yeah. I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? I, I think of it like this now. I'm trying really hard in 2021 to think of it like this, that the more I invest in myself and look after myself, the more able I am to look after my boys and my new puppy with okay. you come here and my husband and my friends. And so I don't, I'm really trying very hard not to feel as guilty because I need to make sure I've got enough petrol in my tank because quite often I'm on empty, like I'm sure a lot of you are, and you just, you've got nothing left. But um, reading really helps me refill my tank it really does so i'm um, very it grateful to books for that it's all these little things which is what i'm encouraging people to do the reading the crafting all the things that really light you up and you love that yes. are filling your cup self-care doesn't have to be a full day at the spa that costs five hundred dollars mm. it can be a nice soft blanket you know snuggled up reading a book with a beautiful cup of tea in a beautiful china cup like how lovely is that you know, and no, you're special no. and you deserve it. And you fill that cup up and then when the teenage daughter comes home with the hormones raging, you <laughs> can tell it. You can just be calm. Totally. And, relax. and that's what's been working for me and that's what I'm encouraging yeah. with my members as well. So just perfect. So just to finish up then, how would people find you and how would you uh, – is the book club, your book club free or what is um, – how do people join or find it's out about your podcast? Thank you, Doc. The good news is it's all free. It's all free. It's all free. Um, and you can find us on Instagram and Facebook and, and Twitter too. But look, I do prefer Facebook and Instagram. And if you just go at the Grown Up Girls Report, you'll find us there. Um, and the book list is shared. And, for example, this week it's Book Club Week. So Book Club Week is every second week. So 
I will post a little reminder earlier in the week saying, you know, we've got, for example, all that shimmering, all the shimmering skies this week by Trent Dalton. Anyone read it, send me your information, send me your feedback. Um, I'll quickly re madly read it and then record it and try and include everyone's feedback in it. Um, and so that's it. So that's every, every fortnight. So you can find us there. Um, there is also a website, the Grown Up Girls Report. It is going through a little bit of it. It's okay at the moment, but it's about to be sort of re, re Relaunched, so uh, stay tuned for that, and there'll be some really clear instructions on how to, on how to join the book club. But look, it's just a little community, a little bit like yours for like-minded middle-aged women who I like to think we're still very much in our prime, and you know, yeah, um, um, so, yeah absolutely the golden years, I say. So um, yeah, so it's just for like-minded women. It's a very inclusive, happy place where we just try and you know raise each other up and you know share our day-to-day -day lives. So uh, no, it's um, I'm very blessed to have have found it and be part of it. Well, I'm going to share the link in the Facebook Live. I highly recommend mm -hmm. everyone checking out the Grown Up Girls Report and joining a book club, whether it's Alex's or someone else's, to encourage you to set that deadline for yourself and really force yourself into it. Um, to find a book you love and practice that self-care. And yes. if you don't have the time to actually sit down and read, take an audio book in the car, whatever, but it can just benefit you in so many ways. So. Um, I want to thank you so much for your time today, thank Alex. You. It was lovely. I know we've spoken before online, but it's lovely to meet you in person. I follow you on Instagram. And I, I haven't seen a picture of the puppy yet, but I, knew, I saw that you were going to get it, so I can't wait to see the picture of the puppy. The puppy. Oh, there's, there's one up there now. Yesterday was Oh, I'll go check it out. But, um, yeah, no, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. Thank you, Anne. And so lovely to make the connection and lovely to meet you all and uh, look forward to staying in touch and chatting down the track. Thank you again. No problem. Lovely, lovely to have you. Lovely to meet you, Alex. I'll catch you again soon. Likewise, lots of love, Anne. Cheers. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Alex. Bye. Bye.